Incredible. All right. Welcome back to our channel. Hey. We're here. We're alive. We're yeah. good. Everybody's good right now. Um, we just wanted to hop on here and talk about all the stuff that's gone on the last couple weeks. It has been a ride. I guess it's been almost, well, two and a half weeks or something by now since all the craziness started in our lives, both positive and negative and otherwise. Yeah. It's been crazy. To say so the, the craziness started with a video I posted with an update on this room behind us that Dan built. And I posted it on TikTok and Instagram and YouTube. And on Instagram, it's up to almost 85 million views. And on TikTok, 25 million, I think. And now it's just finally starting to catch up on TikTok or on, on YouTube. YouTube. It's, yeah. It just hit 10 million. Yeah, so, it took like two weeks where it just like sat kind of like dormant with only like a couple hundred thousand views. Yeah. <laughs> It's eh. crazy. It's uh, it's literally un that unfathomable to think that that many people are viewing our content. So it's it was a little overwhelming in a good way. But we just kept watching the numbers go up and up and up. And then we started getting reached out to by People Magazine and Newsweek. And well, someone's at the door. The dog's barking. Um, people wanting to do like write books and movies movies and like all these crazy things and yeah. we're just trying to figure out how to navigate it all but it allowed us to have some extra income so that we weren't so stressed out about yeah. christmas and also like we took advantage of all the traffic on our pages and did some lives and were able to talk to so many more of you than we usually get to so that was fun we had a few really nice ladies reaching out to us on live when we were on TikTok actually encouraging us and demanding that we in a really nice way that we create a wish list for our kids um for Amazon um it didn't start out like we weren't like hey we need help like yeah help me do this 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 way it was just like a genuine conversation yeah you'd have with anybody else and it's just like holy crap man I haven't even thought about Christmas like well no because uh, I was telling the story of um how I had told Uriah oh, like yeah. the week before that so our 11 year old son that um barring a Christmas miracle Christmas might be a little scarce as far as presents goes go this year um and so it was a few days after that that this video went viral and allowed us to make some money um on TikTok mostly and uh so as it kept going up and up in numbers I I said to Uriah like well, I think we got our Christmas miracle. Yeah. And he said, Mom, I've been praying for a Christmas miracle. And then he said, mm. he followed that with, I wanted the babies to have a good Christmas. And me too. <laughs> but mostly the babies, he said. <laughs> In true 11-year-old fashion. Yeah. Um, so I was telling that story. And then these ladies were like oh my goodness we want to buy presents for your kids and we we're like no like there's so many people that need it more than we do we're fine we're we're good we're gonna be okay yeah. but they really wanted to do that and we've learned that you shouldn't deny people the opportunity to serve i had another 80 year old my she's probably like 50 older lady helped me put groceries in the car the other day so sweet but i was like no it's okay I really think like she's driving what? she's driving the scooter out and she's parked right behind us this goes i've got a couple of these stories but this one like she's like elderly and, and the worst little... thing about this story oh. is that i'm sitting in the passenger seat of the car and i know people are just thinking like what is her deal <laughs> Dan told me to. Like I, I he's like, babe, hey, yeah, we'll get warm. Again. It's cold outside. I'll put the I'll put the groceries the MS, in. Her, with her MS, like the weather, it all sucks. Like, and I'm fine to put the groceries in. And I, I have to like bite my tongue and be like, okay, I fine. I'll be, go. I have to I'll push go sit her in this car while you unload all the groceries. So then I'm sitting there like feeling bad already that Dan's doing She's all the unloading like, the doing groceries. Nails and stuff. Yeah. And, like, fluff. Yeah. 
I'm no. sitting in there feeling bad, like I should, I should be out there helping, whatever, at least go put the cart away. And then I hear this older lady out there, can I help you? Like <laughs> insisting to help him. And then I just feel even worse. And so then I'm B. like, Aunt B voice. Slumping down <laughs> in the seat, like, please don't see me up here. And I'm like a total whatever. Anyways. I was telling that story on our live and some really kind people reached out. So we actually had several people purchase a lot of gifts for our kids for Christmas. And we had, there's so understand we're looking for. that was another Christmas miracle. Like we just had so many Christmas miracles and little did we know that a much wasn't more even important yet. Christmas miracle was coming, right? So what happened? Uh, which part where I'll see. so we got in an argument on December 20th and just you know typical couple stuff where you're just at each other and stressed and frustrated and whatever you know where your wife or girlfriend just doesn't realize that they're wrong all the time and... yeah that type of argument <laughs> and then but on the 21st like we still hadn't done our christmas like stocking shopping and all that kind of stuff yeah and so we knew we had to get out and about and get our, our, our stuff done so we kind of you know like couples do we pretended like it didn't happen and like went on so we could get through the day and then we were going to discuss it later probably but later didn't come because all of a sudden by the time we got home that night and we had a good day but we just hadn't we hadn't like fully reconciled our issue that we were having the day before, which right now I can't even remember what it was. So obviously it wasn't that important. Mental note. Like, <laughs> so um, we got home, we we had had some dinner, we like took some time. The, the older kids had got the babies to bed. So we're just like, let's just stay out. So we were eating in the car and just chatting and having a decent night. And then we got home. By the time we got home at like 11.30, Dan's pain was it just amped up yeah, like crazy. It started being weird. Like like when I wear pants anyways, like my legs are irritable. Just having the cover on there just gets it more active. But like my leg was like kicking out like, like I don't have that. Some people with paralysis have like, it's called clonus and where your legs are like bouncing a lot or like spazzing out a lot but, but it's not typical for my for my nerves to be to the point where it's like kicking my leg out and I kick and I kick and like before very long like my shin was bleeding from like kicking the stuff underneath the the dashboard there and I was like gosh dang this is stupid yeah, so he like, starts tearing his pants off well, not yet I told Andrea I was like I'm gonna need I'm gonna need my medication to yeah. make it in the house can you just would you go get it like so then she ran in to go get it. She ran in to go get the medicine. It's an injection that Couture liked to, to help out. And and by the time she came back out, my legs were both going. And I was like pulling my pants off. I'd taken my shoes off. Like, and my, what are you doing? My pants are on the floor. And she's like, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh my gosh. She's like, legs are going nuts. Like, yeah, I can't it was, get it to stop. It was like getting out of his mind. like with the pain just like trying to get away from it any way he could yeah. so finally made it inside and like you, you used the bathroom and then you got in bed and then he was just like all over the place just like restless crazy moving around and, and started like I don't know I might have to go to the hospital Yeah. and then he started trying to search like Baclofen pump withdrawal on his phone, but he was starting to get so the baclofen pump. Back. For those who don't know, like I have this like hockey puck metal disc like in my body that has medication with a little tube that goes back to my spine. So that's yeah, so we easy. were. He was thinking that he was having that something malfunctioned with the pump, and that maybe he was having withdrawals from that, which is why the pain would have been amping up, and so. He had also, side note, he had told me that day that he was feeling like he had a UTI coming on or that he had one already. Um, and so it got to the point where he was getting so 
like out of his mind in pain that he couldn't think straight. He was like trying to pull like Google up on his phone or whatever and couldn't even do that. So he finally was like, babe, can you search this for me? I can't figure my phone out. That is so, it was so weird. Cause I like looking at it and I'm like, is it unlocked? Do I need to unlock it? Like, where do I go to find any? Like, yeah. it was so weird. And looking weird. back now, I see like that was the starting of you being disoriented, but I had never, we'd never experienced you like becoming cognitively disoriented when your pain's bad. So like, I wasn't yeah. even, I was just thinking your pain was so bad that you were getting, it was getting in your way. But so then I, like it started getting so bad that I was like, do I need to call an ambulance? Like, what do we need to do? By this time, it's like 1.30 in the morning. All the kids are asleep. And so I'm thinking like, I need to call an ambulance because I can't leave the kids here in the middle of the night. But thankfully we had our older kids home that night. And um, so I, we got loaded up in the car finally and headed to the, and hospital i was and, telling andrea at this point i was like gosh no like i don't want to go like we, we probably need an ambulance like an ambulance like i was again also thinking i need to go but we we're trying to figure that out but i was like ah oh, like i can't i don't want to i don't want to miss christmas like yeah and it was still several days away but i just had this really bad feeling and mentally. i knew that i knew at that point that we couldn't i couldn't put you in an ambulance because i could tell that you weren't going to be able to talk at least through your pain at that point. I didn't realize you were disoriented, but I knew that you wouldn't be able to talk through your pain enough to tell them in your right mind, like all the things that you would need to tell them about your yeah, health and about your medications and about all the things. So I knew I oh needed to go with them and sorry, I'm going to be talking during most of this because Dan wasn't conscious for the rest of the story. <laughs> so, uh, he doesn't remember me taking him to yeah, the so ER. Crazy. He has no recollection. Like after what was going on in our bedroom, he has no recollection. So the last thing in the bedroom was that he was trying to find his oral baclofen to try and take some. And you were just like rummaging through the medications and like couldn't find it. And then you just were like shoving your pockets full of medications. And then we got in the car and I started asking him questions. And he, he was literally just like like flailing about like flopping over to my side of the car like, and like, like... <laughs> but he wasn't like normally when his nerve pain is amped up super crazy he's like grunting and moaning and screaming and cussing and like telling me you know he's cognitive and telling me how bad his pain was but he was like being silent and just it was just his body was reacting he was like looked like he was having seizures and so I started like tapping at him and like babe like what are you what are you doing like what are you feeling like and I was trying to ask him questions to keep him conscious because I was worried he was going to pass out and so I asked you I'm like how is this pain different than your normal nerve pain because normally you're screaming at this point and now you're not you're just quiet but your body's reacting like how is this pain different and you started saying stuff like bunny hopscotch like up down like you were just not you were super disoriented and delusional yeah. so that started freaking me out thankfully he was still like physically capable by the time we got to the er a few minutes later um of transferring out of your know. chair and go rolling no in clue. but even watching the video i'm like yeah. How do I not? I'll how like, do I not I'll know? I'll insert some clips here when we first got to the ER of what That's he was crazy, doing. Man. But I was getting so frustrated because there was a gentleman <laughs> checking himself in to the ER and he clearly was not in an emergency situation. You know, maybe he had like the flu or a sore throat or something, but it wasn't like a life or death emergency. A uh, hangnail. And I thought that Dan's situation was very dire and they took that other guy back before him and then they were just taking their sweet time like and Dan's over here like looking like he's having seizures not able to answer questions like completely disoriented I'll insert some more clips here but I was ah. so frustrated I finally was like we're, I feel like this is an emergency nobody's taking it seriously like it's an emergency can you please get a doctor honestly I thought I was like 
coming off of like drugs yeah. or tweak is why they're probably just like, oh, dude, like, yeah. screw it. Like, Where we live, there's a, there's a lot of drug problems and yeah, I'm sure they see a lot of people coming in with drug withdrawals from other situations. But I was but... like tripping, like, I've seen people like tripping in, in law enforcement for a number of years and like, I can see how they would be like, oh my gosh, dude. Yeah, just another situation like yeah. that, but um, which they should also take seriously. You know, you know yeah. medical professionals understandably get kind of numb to things that they see a lot, but yeah. um, it got so between what I was saying and what the doctor thought, whatever we kind of were concluding that it was probably back of the withdrawal, so that's kind of what they started treating it for. They started. We got an IV in and started putting uh, Valium and different things like that in there to try and just calm him down because he was spasming all over the bed, just out of control and delusional. And he started like reaching for stuff on the bed that wasn't there and just talking nonsense. And and so um, they were trying to calm it, like giving him not normal amounts of like these medications trying to calm them down but in the end that we uh doctor decided to that he needed to be transferred to the university of utah where his medical team is that that um, controls his back with and pump and his all of his spinal care and things and so they put him in an ambulance and drove him there which is about a 45 50 minute drive and so I followed behind, and again, now we're getting to like 2.30, 3 in the morning. That's so crazy. And by the time we got there, he was still completely restless and flailing about, but cognitively not functioning enough to even know where he was or what was going on. And so they had like four people trying to hold him down to get more IVs in, and to get medication into his IVs, and to do all the things they finally got a urine sample and were able to determine that he had a uti um that's embarrassing but that was like they made me pee and i don't even remember it yep but the er doctor even came to me and she's like he does have a urinary tract infection but i think that's secondary to whatever's going on like this seems much more serious than that and so they they came down and interrogated his back lift and pump checked it out to see if it seemed like it was working and interrogating it means that it's like a computer program where they have to scan it and then it reads out on the ipad they're not like yelling at my belly <laughs> yeah <laughs> what are Tell you doing what's going on what are you doing in there now so they they determined that from that way that the back lift and pump was functioning it wasn't reading any error codes or anything and then they ended up taking him for a CT scan of his brain to make sure everything looked okay there. They were asking me if you had had any falls, if you hit your head, anything like that. And um, on the scan, I guess they could see the where the catheter goes into your spine. And from what they could see, everything looked fine still with the back open pump. So they were starting to be a little baffled on that. And... This whole thing was really scary for me because now we're at hours and hours of him being completely delusional, out of it, disoriented, so crazy. hallucinating. If, if I hadn't, if and you like, hadn't come, at I that point, to be there. That's nuts. Yeah, at that point, we had no answers Trip other than that he had a UTI, which apparently most of the world knows that a UTI can get that bad and be really crazy and kill people, but... For some reason, even though UTIs are an issue with Dan quite frequently, at least compared to the rest of the population, because he has to self-cath every day, and so that introduces bacteria. Like, neither of us knew that a UTI could get that bad, that, or could cause that type of thing, no. or could go septic even. Like, I just... I yeah, never... I've heard him say, you know, like, if you're getting a whole bunch of them, like, and you're not going to the bathroom or something, like, eventually you could get, like, a... Uh, like hurt zero. your kidneys like a kidney infection instead yeah. of just a, so i was like i mean that was like my biggest 
fear in that whole world. Like, yeah. I had no clue. But I didn't know it could go septic. So, and that's what they were, they were using that word, which is terrifying to me. That's like a huge fear of mine. So eventually around, I don't know, I think it was like five or six in the morning, they transferred him up to the ICU, which in and of itself was scary. So I was waiting out in the waiting room. They wouldn't let me be in there when uh, they were getting him all prepped and stuff in the ICU. And I guess he started puking a lot and um, they were worried that because cognitively he was so out of it that he wasn't gonna be able to protect his airways from the puke and that he would asphyxiate it or whatever, choke or whatever. And so next thing I know the E or the ICU doctor came out, was talking to me and asked me a bunch of questions. And she said, um, we need your permission to intubate him. Intubating is something that we had discussed extensively in the past with all of the help things going on where people had to be put on ventilators and whatnot. Um, it was something Dan got pneumonia in his lungs during all of that <clears throat> pandemic stuff. And he, he was very, very adamant that he did not ever want to be put on a ventilator or intubated. Yeah. And um, so now all of a sudden I'm in a situation where the doctor's telling me that she thinks for his own safety and well being that he needs to be intubated and it put me in a really hard spot because I knew that if Dan was awake, he would be like, heck no, like, do not put a tube down my throat. Yeah. I don't want a ventilator on my body. Definitely. And fighting that. yeah. So I knew that if he was in his right mind, but then I had to think, okay, also though, if you were in your right mind and you could see that there's a chance that you're going to asphyxiate and die from your vomit, then you probably would say, yeah, Actually, yeah I guess yeah. do it. That would freak me out. If it's going to save your life. There was a girl I knew that when I was in law enforcement that died. She was like yeah. 20 years old and it was silly. She was in there for like the flu or something and ended up asphyxiating and dying on puke. Like, so that probably would have like rung a bell. And yeah. So Anyways. I told him, okay, go ahead. But it was through lots of tears and trauma because I need to tell this story before I go further to kind of give you some background for those that don't know my ex-husband while well, we were still married um 10 years ago was in a motorcycle accident and it left him in a coma for like a month and a half and i had a lot of scary experiences and lots of trauma from my hospital stay with him um he was originally they didn't know whether it was just the medicine they were giving him that was making him stay in a coma or if he was in like a legit coma where he couldn't wake up and his brain was like swelling and his skull was cracked in all the places and he was in really really bad shape they told me that he was probably gonna die and um they would try to turn the sedation down eventually when they felt like his brain was in a safer place and he wasn't waking up and so they would tell him you know ask him nod your head give me a thumbs up squeeze my finger whatever and he wasn't doing any of it he wasn't following commands That's at all so crazy. at which point they realized that he was in like a legit coma that they could not wake him up out of so i have all kinds of trauma from that it's horrible so when they intubated Dan and put him in a medically induced coma I had so many fears and so much of that trauma to come back the end result of my ex-husband was that he eventually did wake up enough out of his coma that he could go to um, rehab and he had to relearn everything walking talking eating his name like all the things so to try to okay, there's a tissue box and to try to orient his brain 
and um, and now he's like a, a child still. He's permanently yeah. with a severe traumatic brain injury. And um, if you speak with anyone that knows him and knew him before, um, we would all agree. I think that he he died that day. 10 years ago and like his body's physically still here and there are some remnants of him still here but like his daughter like like people you know, the same thing they just know that that's not not him anymore it's yeah really... anybody that's dealt with somebody that either has um, a traumatic brain injury or Alzheimer's is very similar I used to work with people that had Alzheimer's in a care center and a lot of that is very similar and I, uh, people that have a relative with Alzheimer's experience the same types of emotions that you do when your loved one has a brain injury that's that severe um, you know when they don't recognize you or they don't remember who you are or they don't remember your home or they don't remember special memories that you had together or they don't like getting married and having kids yeah when your babies were born or vacations you took or um, and then their their just personality is gone and they're just staring into blank space and just not there anymore so um yeah so they had dan in a medically induced coma then in the icu intubated and completely out of it i'll insert a picture here and um it was terrifying at at several points in there like I didn't know if he was going to make it and they were wanting to do all these tests on him that I knew he would not be okay with. They, they needed to do a lumbar puncture to check him for um, meningitis. They started treating him for meningitis just in case that's what it was with some hardcore antibiotics, but they obviously didn't want to be putting those in your system if they didn't have to. Um, and so they were wanting to do a lumbar puncture, but for those that no, or don't know. Dan has adhesive arachnoiditis, which is when all this, the nerves in his scar, in his uh, spinal canal, cord, spinal cord, <laughs> scar together and then scar to the side, and then there's hardly any yeah. spinal fluid in there, and that's what causes his intense pain that you've seen. All oh gosh! Here. It causes this type of pain, and so. Oh um, gosh! When they asked if they could do a lumbar puncture, like I knew that there is a really, really high chance, like pretty much a 100% chance, that if they go in and puncture into that lumbar space, then they are going to completely fire up and oh my gosh. make my. his arachnoiditis permanently worse. <clears throat> and for those that know the pain that Dan goes through, like the thought was unfathomable to me. I'm like, I cannot do that to him. Like I can't do that to him. So I'm sobbing and I'm like, traumatized and I'm telling like crying to the doctors and saying no like no we can't do that it, like what other options are there and then the other option then that they gave me was that they could puncture his okay. c-spine and get the fluid from there and then you know they tell you the risks of that and then it's like oh but then it could affect his spinal cord from here down if something goes wrong and I'm like okay so then we're gonna turn from paraplegic to quadriplegic like what are we talking here or we're gonna have arachnoiditis up here and down here like it was just terrifying and I'm like so um, my my uncle came in my aunt and uncle came in and were there for me through all of this which I'm so thankful for They're and amazing. my uncle um, gave a blessing to Dan gave it said a prayer for him and um, and then my uncle looked at me while I was trying to make these hard decisions and said, my prayer for you is that you'll know what you need to do. You'll know what Heavenly Father wants you to do and you'll know what Dan needs you to do. And so I was, um, I was just like, I just kept saying no, like, no, you can't do it. You can't do it. And then I had several different doctors coming to explain to me why they think it needed to be done. You why get this a lot too, like always battling doctors. You gotta advocate for yourself, you guys. Like I'm not advocating for myself. I'm I mean, advocating like, for you, for which your is team. Really important to me. Yeah. And so. They knew what I meant. Finally, while this other doctor's talking to me, I just like never before I had like the piece of the. Hi. Yeah. Love you. We're doing video. Say hi. You can't. It's not a lie. It's just. 
edit it out. Love you. Love you. Or you can actually be in it and just give me a hug and the kids actually love me. Mm -hmm. Love you. Love you. Get your toe feeling better. When you cut it open yesterday. How do you know that? I want to grab my backpack. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot that. She like came popping in for half a second. She like kind of like squeezed like. Me sneaky going through the house. Like, what are you doing? Nice. See ya. I don't know about Yeah, they're the good. Last one. No, they're bunches. Okay. Bunches. Oh, a really important. So, listen. I have felt the spirit a lot in my life. I feel like I'm pretty in tune with the spirit. Oh, that's But I have never... That had like I've never gone from like completely angst anxiety tears fret like what do I do I don't know what to do to like just 100% calm and knowing exactly what I needed to do I immediately felt like as the doctor was talking to me I don't know what he was saying he was just explaining and I was like looking down at the floor and all of a sudden I was like okay I'll sign it you can do it. And the message that I got from the spirit was just let them do it and then pray that nothing will go wrong. And so that's what I did. So I signed the paper, they took him off and I went in the room with my aunt and uncle and we just prayed that nothing would go wrong and nothing has, nothing did. Um, so got followed through on that. Like it's not, not just the arachnoiditis either. Like we've heard horror stories like from our friend Lily that we posted about not too long ago that like you can get um, leaks. Like we call it <laughs> spinal leaks or whatever. Yeah. It can cause all kinds of problems. So. Which I did have one of those one time when I was in the hospital originally, and they make you. Hey, why don't you guys take one and? Uh, you want some candy? Go out. Go out. Go play. You want two of them? Mm. I don't want to go out. Okay, you can stay in here. You just gotta be quiet, okay? Can you shut no, the door, Mace? Take this one too, Mace. Here. Oh, no, stay in here too. All right, same thing, you just right. got to be quiet. So, I was thankful for that. So, the other thing that they were talking about doing is um, putting dye through the catheter on his back lip and pump to make sure, right there. like, they could do imaging as they put the dye through to make sure there's no kinks or blocks in the actual catheter to make sure the medication's making it all the way to where it needs to in his spine. And that's another thing that could drastically affect and permanently. Okay, but remember you've got to be quiet. I'm almost talking. Okay. Um, permanently affect his arachnoiditis and make it worse. So thankfully, when they rolled out the meningitis and felt like they had enough data that it wasn't a back lift and pump withdrawal. And then it got to the point where they're like, all right, like, we really think that this is the UTI just gone bad. I don't know if it spread into the blood or whatever. They were worried that the UTI <clears throat> had spread into his blood and then spread into his spinal fluid, which would have caused the meningitis, I believe is what they were worried about. <clears throat> but anyways, it was like, we were like a day and a half out from Christmas and he was still intubated and still medically sedated in a coma medically induced coma and people were saying to me that like oh we're praying he's home by christmas and i was like no he's definitely not going to be home by christmas but thanks for your prayers <laughs> like he did not i did not think he was gonna pull out of it that fast yeah, like yeah, even so, if he woke uh, up uh. so they kept so they kept trying to turn the sedation down and when they would, like he was so agitated and so non-responsive that they had to turn it back up. So of course that like made me really crazy and anxious <clears throat> given the, the past history I have with that situation. 
Um, but during all of this, I think this it also Thank was a, a really good lesson to me or like reminder to me, like in the end, like I knew that in making those decisions that like Dan always as my husband, like he trusts and puts so much faith and um, yeah, just trust in my relationship with God and my spiritual promptings that like I knew in the end that while he 100% would be against a lumbar puncture, like if I told him that the spirit was telling me that that's what we needed to do, I knew that he would um, go with what I was thinking and feeling and be okay with it. And I was thankful to know that, that he trusts and that we have that connection, that he yeah. he knows that I'm, any decision I would make like that would be prayerful and that he would trust that. I, yeah, my, I know Andrea. Instincts. I know Andrea really well. And I know, like, spiritually, that's one of the most beautiful things about her that I knew originally, like, it's like because uh, because of my religious feelings like watching her and knowing her as a mom and a woman and like as a person like being able to have sensed that originally like from the very first thing we actually met when she gave me a, a card with a picture on it when we very very first were like communicating it was like drawn to her love of God and like I just knew she like by definition like the choice daughter of God that was just like I trust like her connection and I've seen her connection uh, um, work like God works through her and she listens and the more that happens like you just can see and trust and know that that's not anything else but that it's, it's amazing I love her I love her thanks yeah so that helped me be at peace with the decisions I was having to make on his behalf too just knowing that he does feel that way about me really thankful for that and knowing that uh, he they were able to turn the sedation down oh they kept turning it down and saying he was agitated so I I told them, like, he's agitated because I know he's in a ton of pain. Like, he hasn't had pain medication in a few days. And, like, he has to have his medication. Yeah, if you know anything. <laughs> if you've seen any of our videos, and so, like, the first couple hours. Yeah. going to be crappy. Oh, yeah, sorry. So once they started treating his pain as well, then when they turned the sedation down, then he was able to, like, wake back up and start to follow commands and start to do what the doctors were asking, indicating that his cognitive function was intact still, thankfully. And um, so they eventually turned it down. And like, by the time he woke up enough to realize where he was and what was happening and that Christmas was tomorrow, he was like, I'm gonna pretend like I'm really good. <laughs> And I'm going to try and get oh out gosh. of here as quick as possible. And we had this really hard. nice doctor come in. His name was Sam. And he was incredible. And he came in and he was like, Mr. Santa Claus Christmas dude. He, he just came in and he was like, he was the, so they were going to move him out of the ICU now that he was awake and all of his vitals were okay and everything. And so he was the ICU or the main floor doctor. And so he came in and basically went through the rundown of all the things that were happening. It's like, I, I mean, we're, we're thinking it's a UTI. We've got that treated. All your vitals are good, whatever. You want to get out of here by tomorrow? Which was like, this was on Christmas Eve. And we were just like, we just got teary eyed and we're like, like yeah. seriously? Because I thought they would at least, even if he was awake and whatever, I thought they would need to still monitor him for several days and whatever. And... How did, so, yeah, how did that happen? That's crazy. Um, Coming back, like, I I've been, geez, and I've our been friend, in. our friend Jeff was there <coughs> when that conversation was happening, and he came and prayed for Dan as well and his sweet wife Jeannie, 
and they they prayed for us and they um Jeff was there when, when the doctor gave that news and he was just like praise God like, glory to God and yeah yeah it's fun it, it's it good was, to have friends like that like those are the kind of friends you need like it just felt like what are you looking for your life still like this uh so that was that was our christmas miracle another christmas miracle our family just got christmas miracles right and left this year unbelievably it was incredible it was a long story but one that we wanted to share because i know a lot of you were following along and i didn't mention when we were in the er at the university of utah there was a moment where i was just broken down and like I can't do this again <clears throat> because they took Dan out to scan his brain to make sure there wasn't anything wrong with his brain and of course given my history with my ex-husband like that is I was like I don't want to do this again like please don't make me do this again so I was praying and at that moment, I was kind of debating on whether or not I should put a post out there or wait until Dan woke up to, you know, update our followers on what was happening or what. But, like, I genuinely felt like I needed and we needed your prayers. Um, so we just, I just want to thank you all for, like, I put, I put a picture post and a little write-up saying how scared I was and seriously within a few minutes there were hundreds of comments we have such an amazing network of hundreds friends of and family um, like, with prayers you guys are like, family like, we love it saying that, pe that you were praying or actually like writing out prayers like pleading like, on uh, our behalf it's so seriously amazing like, I'm so crazy it meant so much to us. Dan was out of it. He didn't know at the time. It means a lot to him now. But in that moment, it meant so much to me. And it gave me so much strength knowing that we just had such an army of people that were believers, like, praying for us. And we really appreciate it. So, um, yeah. I was, I was pleading in that moment because I was like, okay... I told you at the beginning, like, we had gotten in that argument on the 20th, and I was like, oh my gosh, like, this cannot be the last, this cannot be the last interaction we have together on this earth, like, that's silly, we can't do that, <laughs> so, I was pleading that I would have a second chance to be a better wife, and it's been hard, I'm not gonna lie, it's been hard since he's been back, because, uh, I think you kind of go through, when you're going through trauma, like you, you like have this adrenaline rush to get you through it. And then once things calm down, like all of the trauma hits and it was like, we got home and we were so excited that he was home on Christmas day. We ended up getting home at like 4.30 or something. So we had our Christmas Eve that night and we were able to have our Christmas morning the next day and like be together with the kids and everything. And, um, so we were just so thankful and everything and after that like it was like the next day and I'm like trying to we're trying to get back into the swing of things and answer emails and get back into business and and like I got to a point in that day where I was just like are we just gonna pretend like we just didn't get like completely traumatized and <clears throat> bulldozed over last week like and we gotta process this at some point and at that point I started experiencing lots of anger towards Dan just that he hadn't like put himself first that he hadn't taken care of his health that he was like you know like he knew he had a uti coming and he's always like i don't want to inconvenience people by going to the hospital i don't want to whatever and so i was like just so frustrated that he wasn't taking care of his health and so then i was like you're not like you have to sleep you have to take care of yourself you have to go to the doctor when you need to like otherwise like you're gonna leave us like you're not doing anyone any services by not taking care of yourself because then you're not gonna be here for very long and like then what are we gonna do like we're gonna be without you like you gotta take care of yourself so i was like experiencing a lot of anger and frustration and it's been like a rough few days trying to get back into 
the the swing of things pass just passing that. <laughs> Like an emotional band. I to mention, like, right after I started PMSing, and that was like not a good thing to be like hormonal on top of all this stuff. It was not fun the last few days, but here we are. Marriage, seriously, I'm not gonna be like oh, marriage advice perfect and stuff, but seriously, like, it's round three for both of us, and I think. Comparing now to like my previous marriage, as far as like the relationship side of things, like we can argue and we can have like a really frustrating argument and like even be loud and like just pissed, and whatever, which is new. Like, I'm not used to that, but like, um, <clears throat> so to have that and then realize that that's like relationship it's life it's whatever and then like be okay when things are better an hour two hours five hours ten hours a day later like whatever that like you, you can't just hang on to that and, and stay in that in that moment and i think like i know my one, one of my biggest faults in the past was like well, my parents never fought i never saw really how to communicate in a relationship so like when we would fight I'd just like go silent and she would go silent my ex and like we had some big things going on that needed to be talked about and hashed out and figured out and what? didn't have a clue what to do with it so just like was quiet and silent and you know in my in my world and how I was raised like that meant like okay go get a water uh, here like that meant that <clears throat> that everything was okay, and so I just took that one actually. Okay, <laughs> give you one too. Here, I'll pour. All right, yeah, you guys share that one, Mom. I'm gonna have this one. Thanks for sharing. That's really sweet That's of you. So nice. <clears throat> so, like in my era, and I think it's an era thing too. So like, I'm like 22 years. And I think, like, parents of my generation. What? Gosh. 22 plus serious. 24. I said that, something like that. 22 times 2 plus 2. <laughs> I don't know. I don't do math. How old are you? 46. We don't do math in our house. So we don't know. We don't have to know. For real, though. Are you 46? But I think so. I think so, yes. Yeah. Right so yeah anyways so that era like that like i think about my friends parents and a lot of parents like parents were just that sort of that way like my that's, parents were <laughs> yeah and uh like like i guess anyways like that's how i learned how to be and that's like all i was given then i moved out when i was like 17 and I wanted to go figure out the, the, the world of myself and like was failing all over the place, different things here and there. But um, anyways, yeah, it's okay to like have emotion and talk and get things hashed out and like whatever and like, and love and be, and realize that just cause you got mad and there's love there and like love big and you know, like, but, you can be angry big and you can love big and like but be okay with like the fixing side of things or the the like getting over it like you're not just hanging on to like every damn thing that made you mad or that you're like shocked that you got upset about or that your spouse was upset about like like give us some hey, no, 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 let's not mess with that oh, like, let's, um but um like you give, just, you give, just gotta um, get it out too like you can't if you hold all the things inside, like, you can't go through an experience like that and then just, like, not ever talk That's about it. Here. Maybe that one. Put this not one ever get out all the emotions that happened with it or whatever. Yeah. I'm gonna help you out, honey. Just don't want you guys putting water everywhere again. This room has had so much water in it. Okay. 
crazy. So we're back to life. We are committed to never let a UTI go untreated again. Uh, like you never fight again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We don't make commitments that we can't keep. So, so that wouldn't be it. But we are, uh, yeah. And any comments that you guys would like to put encouraging Dan to take care of his health and to get sleep that he needs to and to tell him how important all those things are and back his wife up would be much appreciated. And you might because get silenced. Because he puts everybody <laughs> before himself, which is so beautiful and so not good all at the same time. He just goes and goes and goes and doesn't take care of himself. So he needs all you mamas out there. I know most of our followers are women. We need some good mama lectures up in the comments section. You have my permission. And I promise Dan won't mute you or block you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, thanks for being here. Thanks for your love and support. Okay, in a minute, okay. Whoa. Why are we doing pop rocks in the house? Yeah, um, and also, wait, uh, one other thing, and I've wanted to do this, and maybe we'll do a different one where we encourage more of this, but like, as far as relationships go, like, I know we know everything about them, and like, ours is perfect, but yeah, if anybody has like advice, like, I love, I've seen a few posts where people put on like, and mention like what they do or what they feel is successful or is the success or the positive side of their marriage or relationship or whatever but I want to encourage people like feel free to like stamp that out there too like if you like put it on here and I'd love to read it and uh, you know maybe some of them will even um, pull comments and, and talk about bigger you know like i think i think they'll sort of like rip a bunch of band-aids off so to speak and and um in a good way though and have i think it's good to it takes a it takes a village for everything like it takes a village to raise a family but it also takes like, other sources to like evaluate and make your own your own relationship <clears throat> better and uh, uh, that's what I'd encourage. I, I'd like to see some cool advice, some good advice um, on there that, that, that would be noteworthy. Or not noteworthy, but put it out there. Sure. And if you stayed this long, thank you. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And punch the bell.